in 2019's The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance, return to the world of Thra, where three Gelfling discover the horrifying secret behind the Skeksis' power, and set out to ignite the fires of rebellion and save their world. Created by Jeffrey Addis and Will Matthews. Hello, and welcome to the American Recut. I'm Brendan. I'm Nick. And we are going to do a TV series this time, because... Once again, we are out of movies. Yep. Well, I mean, there's movies out there, but really, can we call them movies? Or can we just call them a waste of time? Well, <laughs> there's stuff out there that I don't hate, but I also don't love, so I'm not going to go watch it. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, uh, as always, the American Recut is a spoiler-free o- overview of any given media that we are interested in before we get to our ramble on, which is much more spoiler-ridden. And let's go ahead and uh, take this one apart point by point, since this is a slightly longer form TV series, we can't go into much depth. So let's start with the story. Uh, Brennan, why don't you lead us on the story? It was a very uh, entertaining fantasy, uh, one of which that, you know, it's, it's like a breath of fresh air in the fantasy genre where, you know, we, uh, while it is a prequel to an old uh, series, it captures the original imagination of Jim Henson, you know, uh, it, and uh, <laughs> it's a, the story's very entertaining. It's a little reminiscent of Game of Thrones. It's like uh, Game of Thrones for kids. <laughs> I was having a similar feeling that this was a uh, very classic high fantasy, high fantasy style where we have uh, a story that uh, follows the hero's journey fairly closely. It's it, it hits the beats you expect it to, but it hits them competently, and it does throw in a few curveballs here and there. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned this is like Game of Thrones for kids, which is a little bit true, but there are some scenes which make me really question the PG on, on this series. This is true. No, but, but uh, we'll get into that later. But just just know that if you're watching this and think like this is like the perfect kids show, just plop them down and watch it with it. Probably want to be there with them because there are some scenes that are really surprisingly intense. Yeah, no, thank you for stopping me. That is a very good point. But let's get into uh, characters. Uh, I, I found the characters in this absolutely wonderful. I agree. Uh, they're all There's a plethora of characters, uh, and they're all each, in their own right, uh, very good. And they have, they're they backed by a marvelous voice cast. And yeah, well, once again, classic fantasy. We have a ton of supporting cast. We have a lot of very interesting cultures at play. We have a lot of good world building happening. Yeah, characters all have their own motivations. They have their own their own events. And this is a story that kind of captures both uh, the uh, the planning style of writing and the pants style of writing, where you have the characters leading the way through the story, but you also have an experienced hand that's guiding the story where it needs to go to hit the satisfying points it needs to hit. I agree. No, very well executed story writing. Um, and like you said, great world building. Even though this is a prequel, there's a, a lot more elaboration into this world than there was in the original film. Uh, and it's, it's, it's marvelous. All right, uh, next up, effects. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, the puppets. Yeah. <laughs> I think that with the puppets, there are times where it undercuts some of the tension of a scene or the drama. Like, like whenever you see a, a, the, see a, one of the gulfling uh, having to run away from the situation or running into combat, and you see like, the very quick shot of their feet, just like these, these little tiny baby feet just swinging back and forth. <laughs> right. It, it, it can kind of kill attention, but it can also be really a, a, a nice, well-placed light joke at times. Yeah. Uh, there's also moments where the puppetry is used to its, to its advantage. Uh, there are some characters where you'll see that there's very clear people who are in like a human suit or when it cuts to CGI in order to make an, an effect uh, on how a character moves. And it can be a genuinely startling moment when someone doesn't move with the, with the usual janky puppet movement or when, there's, or when they move a little bit too smoothly for a puppet. Right, right. Um, and by the way, speaking of puppets, it's kind of nice to, it, to see puppetry back in action, you know, I mean, it's something we haven't seen in a long time. We are all so accustomed to seeing uh, a whole bunch of CGI, uh, and well, like Nick said, this style of puppetry could be a little childish and can kind of kill the mood a little bit, the serious tone in it. Um, it's still uh, a real good change of pace in our media diet. And then as far as backgrounds go and the uh, the occasional landscape shots, they oh are God. actually extremely impressive. Very. Uh, th- there's something about the way that these sets are built and the way that they're used. Uh, there's, there's one scene that's used a lot in the trailers where you see um, one of the Gelfling uh, b- b- run away out of a window, jump out and jump jump down and slide off a thing. This is all one long tracking shot, which makes me wonder if this was a full set that was built with this in mind or if this was a, a, a seamless switch into CG. 
Uh, either way, though, there are some really impressive sets that, that are built for this. I agree. That is one of the most impressive parts of this whole show is the sets. I agree. So surreal. Um, uh, finally, themes. Uh, there's some themes that are explored here and there. There's, uh, there's a lot of standard fantasy uh, themes. There's themes about family, about what the right thing to do is. Uh, right. The, the, the nature of war, um, the nature of power. Right. Uh, very, uh, like Nick said, uh, very fantasy-esque. Uh, typical coming-of-age uh, protagonists. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if they are, though, because there's three different protagonists that, that show up in this. There are. There are, and they're all growing in their own way. You know, um, one's going off into the new world. One's, run, you know, they're all leaving their homes in some form or fashion. Learning uh, more about the outside world and its cruelties. Breaking their shell. <laughs> Uh, yeah, as far as themes go, though, I think that as far as overall themes, there are some interesting things about the nature of death and fear of death. And yes. There's a lot of interesting things going on with this show, which is a big part of why I came to really fall in love with this show, is that it's not afraid to at least acknowledge the different interesting questions that can come up over the course of a fantasy series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, Alright, uh, fine, let's get into recommendations. Th thumbs up, thumb down, thumb sideways. <laughs> um, I think, and I, so I, I'm, I'm definitely giving it a thumbs up. Well, the puppets did creep me out. Uh, they creeped me out when I was a kid. You know, watching Dark Crystal as a kid, you see all these th monsters and creatures. How can you not get freaked out? But watching it as an adult, you know, I mean, they still kind of creep you out, but you're still mesmerized by the story, the landscape, and everything else in it. So resounding thumbs up for me. Yep, I absolutely recommend this as well. Uh, it's got, it has a f fascinating world that it builds. It goes into uh, some very interesting story. It goes into some twists which genuinely are unexpected and it can get into places that are really dark when, when you get down to it. Yeah. Uh, the puppetry is used generally to good effect. There are times where it gets in the way, but not enough to really kill interest in the show. And the world feels like it's had enough pre-planning a forethought into how the world works that it feels like a genuinely interesting place to spend time and i look forward to further seasons if they get them if they get them i i'm iffy on this on a prospect of a second season but we'll get that into that later they, they ended on a pretty hard cliffhanger but anyways <laughs> yeah well they did but yeah we'll get into that in the ramble on which uh we'll see you then folks see you in the ramble